Welcome to our 10 minute lightning talk entitled Modeling a Tournament in Neo4j presented by Michael McKinsey. And just as an aside, Kareen wanted me to announce that Michael McKinsey knows Chuck Norris. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you can start now, Michael. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, uh, always cracks me up. Uh, so yeah, my name is Michael McKinsey. Uh, I'm a sixth degree UFAF black belt, and I'm going to talk to you about a personal passion project that I'm working on turning into a prototype for the organization that uh, I'm associated with. And it's based around modeling a tournament in Neo4j. So, well, what's the problem? Well, UFAF, or the United Fighting Arts Federation, which is a martial arts organization founded by Chuck Norris, um, holds every year a international training convention uh, it's hosted annually in Las Vegas. Uh, it's combined, it's comprised of a bunch of different kind of activities that go on, one of which uh, is a series of seminars where we get together and we train and learn from each other. But the other really big component of it is a tournament. Now, on a grand scale of things compared to some of the other uh, data sets you've probably seen in other presentations, this is fairly small, but you're gonna find out, you're gonna start to see that it's a fairly complex and connected problem in which I think Neo4j is a really, really good solution. Um, the tournament only consists of 10 rings, uh, but there are uh, 257 possible divisions that people have to get assigned to and then compete in. So it's small yet kind of large when you're looking at a, a, like a smaller organization and the problem it entails. Well, it's also currently completely uh, done, organized, put together, manipulated by spreadsheets and by hand, which can be quite uh, cumbersome. So is there a way that we can improve the scheduling process and its efficiency using Neo4j? Well, the simple steps of, of how someone kind of gets in is you have a competitor is going to register. They're going to sign up to participate. In those, uh, whenever they register, they get to select the different divisions that they get to compete in. Uh, so the, that uh, competitor gets assigned to a division, and then ultimately we have to assign those divisions to rings. And then lastly, we have to assign the judges to the rings in order for the competition to actually begin. For this talk, we're going to ignore the judges because that's not yet put into place, but we are going to start talking about how we assign divisions to the rings. So going into here, you can kind of see the simple schema that comes from this registration process. A person has registered, that registration allows them to compete in a division, and then that division will occur in a ring. We have a self, uh, a self connected relationship off to the right that says next to, it just gives us some context of which rings are adjacent to which other rings and, and kind of how we process the data. Uh, and then additionally, there's a, a self uh, connected relationship off of division that talks about which, which division is gonna be next once we've ordered it. And that's the area that we're going to focus on for the the rest of this uh, rest of this talk. So, what are the rules? How do we do this? Well, each group has a set of characteristics. Uh, it's going to be their age, their sex, whether they're male or female, and then we've got our different ranks. So, your beginners are going to represent your white belts through purple belts. Your intermediates are blue and green belts. Advanced are red belts, and then black belts. And then there are four different types of divisions that each person can uh, potentially participate in. You've got your traditional kata, which is I think what most people associate when they think of karate. Uh, you have your weapons kata, so your nunchucks, your bow staff and swords. Uh, and then lastly, your sparring. And that's where we get together and beat each other up and then hug afterwards. Um, so an example of one division group, as we'll call it, it, the characteristics of this are the age of 16 to 17, male, black belts. And in this group, there are four divisions. You can see traditional kata, open kata, weapons kata, and sparring. And then the numbers over here on the side represent the number of competitors in that division, uh, in each of those divisions. So we go through and we want to order the divisions within the group. The rules that we have to follow is we're going to always order based upon the number of competitors per division, and we want to go largest to smallest with the idea of tackling the largest division within that group and then working our way down. But the caveat to that is sparring always has to go last. It's in a different format. There's uh, gear. There's a lot more different things that go in, so we always want to put sparring last. Um, so here's an example of that one we just looked at, and based upon this is what we call an unsorted division group. 
Uh, you can see that right now, the first one that's listed is traditional, has five people, open, three, weapons, seven, and then sparring would be eight. So when we go to sort it, our weapons kata would go first because it has seven people more than any of the other groups. Next would be traditional kata, and then uh, the third division would be our open kata with only three competitors, and then ultimately sparring stays last because it has to. So this just represents one of many division groups that then have to get assigned. So what do we do with each division group once we've created it? For that, we are going to order the groups. And by doing that, we're gonna, come, we're gonna give it a, a ranking, if you will, by uh, summing up the total number of competitors in each division. So even if a person appears in multiple divisions, each appearance in that division counts as one essentially. And so we want to sum up and uh, come up with a, a list, an ordered list of the uh, order groups. And we again go largest to smallest. Um, and with that, we're going to use what I'm just calling the crosswalk method. So with that, we have uh, an example of how our rings are generally laid out, go ranging from one to 10. So we would take our largest order group, which is a series of divisions based upon those group characteristics, and we would assign it to ring one. We would then progress down the list of order groups, as, uh, assigning each successive order group to a ring, walking back and forth, basically doing a crosswalk from ring one to ring 10. And we would continue this process until all of the divisions have been assigned. Uh, so that's currently where we're, we're at in terms of where this prototype exists. Uh, there, the next step is going into the grand stack application. I'm a massive proponent of the grand stack. I think Will and his team have done a great work putting this together. Um, and this is the next step. I've got the basic algorithm up and running, but it's about saying, now how do we make this useful and, and, and tied to uh, actually being involved with the process? So the next steps are to complete the prototype application. And that's just providing general basic UI components to interact with the data. Uh, once that prototype is complete, uh, the goal is to then connect it to the actual registration web, uh, website on the UFAF website, possibly run it in parallel for the next ITC so that we can compare how it's manually done versus how it's being done in the algorithm and try to, try to adjust it. Um, with that, we want to do some additional work on limiting the school affiliation that people can sign up with. This is, this is really done to try and avoid having people compete against each other from the same school or same region, particularly in sparring. And by attaching them to a school affiliation and region, we would uh, ultimately want to try and push people to compete against people they haven't competed with before, um, just to make a more fun tournament experience. Um, additionally, we, we do need to ensure that we're enforcing some logic restrictions uh, based upon the current form selection that you have to register for the tournament. It's possible to register or get assigned to a division that's actually not for you, and that's just some limitations that we've got. So we wanna make sure we get those logic restrictions in place. Um, and then after that is to create some sort of admin and user role so that you have someone like a tournament um, coordinator who can kind of dictate what it is uh, and then judges or different type of entities and, and roles within, within the application. The biggest uh, area that I want to really start focusing on with the prototype and, and, and actual use case is collecting metrics because, you know, as stated above, the crosswalk method is really about assigning people to divisions based upon just a count, how many people are participating. That's great, it's a good starting point. But uh, people of different ages, of different ranks, um, they're going to perform quicker, slower, faster, and I think it would be interesting to start collecting time tracking data on each division to try and improve the process. It's a lot to get done in a very short amount of time. So anything that we can do to uh, gain some additional context, I think is gonna be huge. And then lastly, uh, probably most importantly, is assigning judges. This is extremely important when it comes to trying to decide how to assign judges and when and where to assign them. Because all judges are black belts and most black belts also compete so you're trying to set it up so that they maybe compete early and then judge later, judge later, compete early. 
uh, and try to find ways to make sure that if you are judging, you're not slowing up the movement and progression of another uh, ring um, and it, to allow judges to have time to take off and warm up before they compete. You never want to compete going from cold to a full blown, uh, you know, participation. That's how you get hurt. Um, and I think, uh, lastly, we want to then also create a competitor facing UI, let the people at the tournament interact and provide them information about when they're going to perform and just kind of help smooth out the overall process. Um, so competitor, and then also providing some sort of tournament dashboard. Uh, just a, another overview that we can provide at the at the event to help people understand how the whole tournament is progressing. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I am, as Kareen uh, said, I do in fact uh, know Chuck Norris. He he was the one that gave me uh, my black belt. Um, I'm currently working as a programmer uh, caliber in Alexandria. I'm also the Graph DB DC organizer in Washington DC. Um, these are a couple different ways to uh, reach out and connect with me. Um, I think Chuck Norris approves and when in doubt, just remember to sweep the leg. Um, uh, yeah. And with that, I'll just jump into the hunger game questions. Let you guys take a look at that. And then if there's any other short questions, uh, I could try and answer them real fast, but, uh, I appreciate your time and, uh, thank you for, uh, for your interest. Okay, hopefully everybody has <laughs> enough um, time to do their Hunger Games answers in the forum. Thank you very much, Michael, for your presentation. Very interesting. And we love everything you do. Oh, thank so you, guys. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Enjoy the rest of these. Thanks. <laughs>